the UK 3-pin plug. It's an absolute masterclass in functional design in its own right. But is it actually any good for charging your Tesla? Is it more of an emergency thing or can you use it as your primary home charger? Well, I've been doing exactly that for the last four weeks. And in this video, I'm going to go through why and what I'm thinking for the longer term. So let's get charging. No sec. So I'd normally keep this bag in the section beneath the boot, but for the purposes of this video, I thought I'd have it out here. Once I've clicked the cable back in, I pass it through the kitchen window. And then just plug it in next to the kettle. The other end then goes in the Tesla. One thing I like about this charger is that you do get the ability to press that button to open the charge port. You don't have to mess around with your phone. Once you've plugged it in, you'll see the light goes blue. And then as soon as it starts charging, it'll go green. Now that light will remain green as long as the car is charging and unlocked. Okay, so as you can see, it's telling us that to get up to the 80% limit that I've got set, it's gonna take about 10 hours and 15 minutes. Now, I'd expect that to come down a little bit. Um, it's usually a little bit slower when you first plug it in, everything's cold, but once that heats up, the charge rate should increase slightly. Okay, so the first number you see there below the graphic, two kilowatts, that's the current charging rate. I think the maximum you'll get from a standard UK three pin plug is 2.3 kilowatts. The next number along, plus zero, that's the current total, running total, that's been charged in this session. The next one along is your amps, 10 amps. That's, again, the maximum you're going to get from a standard UK 3-pin plug. And then, finally to the right, the voltage. You'll see that flicking around a little bit, um, but obviously 240 volts is the standard for the UK. What I'm going to do now is switch it into miles per hour to make some of these figures a little bit more digestible and relatable. Okay, so you can see we're now at 8 miles an hour. Again, I'd expect that to go up probably between 9 and 10 once things get settled down um, and the charge rate goes up slightly. So what does this mean from a practical perspective? Well, for a daily commute, if you leave the house between 7 and 8 in the morning and get home between 6 and 7 in the evening, that's going to give you between 12 and 14 hours of charge if you plug it in when you get home and take it out before you go in the morning. That, at the, the slowest speed of 8 miles an hour that we've seen there, is going to give about 96 to 112 miles of charge. Now, that's quite a lot to put back in overnight. And if your commute is less than 96 miles, which I think for the vast majority of people it is, then you can fully recharge what you've just done. However, from a practical standpoint, you may not want to leave the vehicle on charge overnight. If you're charging from an indoor power point, it may not be possible just to leave the window open while it's charging and then go to bed. So perhaps you just want to charge from when you get in to when you go to bed, and perhaps that's five or six hours. That's going to give you between 40 and 48 miles of charge in the evening, ready for the next day. Now even that is not bad. If you've got a 20, 25 mile each way commute, then that's perfectly manageable really in the week to do that, refill it up in the evening and get off the next day. Weekend driving obviously is a consideration as well. You may want to do a day where you drive for much longer than your standard commute in the week, but to the same point, you may have a day where you don't drive at all and you can just leave the car on charge. A full day's charge at eight miles an hour, 24 hours is 192 miles, which basically is almost your whole 80% of a charge. So the numbers pretty much add up. It is possible, but it's probably not the most convenient or efficient method. Okay, so why might you choose to use the old three pin charging method when you could get a quicker and more convenient tethered charger on the side of your house? Well, firstly, there's the expense. The cost of getting a charger installed starts at about 600 pounds, and that's with the government grant of 350 pounds that most people are currently eligible for. If you can get away with using the slower rates at home, you may just feel that that money is better spent elsewhere. Secondly, if you don't think you'll be living where you currently are for the foreseeable future, or if it's a place where you visit often but don't live, your parents for example, then maybe it's not going to be worth the cost. 
for me that is the case at the moment due to the current restrictions and situation we're in i've been spending most of my time at my parents house and i don't really want to put a big tethered charger on the side of their house the driving i've been doing here is either been shorter local trips or i've been driving down back down to london in which case i'm going to be stopping at a supercharger on the motorway anyway when i do move back down properly i will get a tethered charger because i'm willing to pay for that extra speed and convenience but while i'm here this is actually working quite well the main issue i have here with charging at home is that we don't have an external power source so that means i've either got to have a window open or i've got to have the door to the garage open at all times while i'm charging which obviously is not great if you want to charge overnight or just in the winter in general so the option I'm actually looking at is getting a external power point fitted, but not a three pin plug, a 32 amp blue commando connection. Now in theory, that should offer the same speeds as a fully dedicated EV charger would. Um, I'm talking to the electrician about it now, and it looks like it'll cost in the region of about 300 pounds. I do need to get a new adapter from Tesla to use that. Um, but as and when it happens, I'll keep you updated and let you know what happens with it. Hopefully you found that somewhat helpful. If you did, please drop a like on the video below. And if you'd like to keep up to date with these videos, please also hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you've got any comments or questions. I'll get back to all of them. But other than that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.